East May in the hostile upper reaches of Scotland. Not everyone's idea of the perfect dwelling, but one man toiled eagerly and without rest to make it habitable and paid the price. I came up here to work in midsummer and I worked 20 hours a day rebuilding the place. Uh, I drove all the way back to Litchfield in one swoop. The word swoop seems oddly accurate now. And I got up to go to school the next morning and I had a coronary. And I thought I was the most unlikely person to have a coronary as I was fairly convinced I was immortal at the time. But um, going into intensive care ward made me realize that there's got to be more to life than just teaching. And I want to do the things I want to do now. David Brian Plummer is a considerable man by any standards. A school teacher, best-selling author in a somewhat obscure field, a one-time professional boxer who went on to become <gasps> fluent in more than a dozen languages. A loner by nature, some would say a maverick. Right, come on, let's go. But there is one constant factor in his life, his dogs. The only passion I have in life is, I suppose, my dogs. I've kept dogs since I was eight years old. I've kept them for rat hunting, I've kept lurches for hare, for rabbit catching, I've kept them for fox catching. Oh. I've Bim. started to train dogs to herd. I think I've got everything I want in life if I have the time to work the dogs and to do as I wish. And some of his fundamental needs, such as food, have traditionally been provided by his dogs. He doesn't have to buy much meat. His ferrets, he's the author of a standard work on their breeding and training, flush out the rabbits. And his dogs dutifully present him with that night's supper. Living in Caithness may be uncomfortable, but it's cheap. His house was a bargain, too. The person who bought it originally intended to live here in retirement with his wife, but didn't take into account the climate. The summer is delightful here. It's light most of the day. But when winter starts, the winds start, and the winds will burrow and etch through your clothes and into your very flesh. And I've always regarded myself as being a fairly hardy man, but the first winter I spent here, I came up here to hunt. Uh, the wind literally began to burrow into me. And I've never experienced anything quite like it. Not that way. Come on. Brian Plummer's other home, down a leafy lane near Litchfield, presents a contrastingly benevolent environment. Here too, the dog population is extravagant. His famous terrier pack is in residence. When I was eight, my mother was convinced that I would be useless to society, etc., etc. And they bought me a bribe, a terrier pup, on the agreement I went to school. I was very, very anti-school from the time <laughs> I was five, when she first dragged me to school and she got me through the gate after she'd won the best of three falls. And the terrier pup did anything but make me go to school, because as soon as I could find it could hunt, I found things a lot more entertaining, messing around pigsties. And I spent all my time shifting the loose stonework of walls and killing rats with the terrier. And by the time I was ten, I was about as proficient a rat hunter as I am now. And that dog from his childhood led to a new strain of terrier. Yep. 
They're not Russells, they're not Jack Russells by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, they've got other blood. They've got beagle blood in them, they've got fighting dog blood. You can see it on that one there. You can see the bull terrier head. Um, I was eight when I first started keeping terriers, and I can trace the ancestry of all of these back to that dog. The effort to perfect this exclusive breed of rat hunters never ceases. His top sire, called Vampire, is considered priceless. So that's a good litter. I like them. I like them. Yes, they're perhaps one of the nicest litters I've bred in 20 years. I hope one day they'll be called Plumber Terriers. Bit of a dubious distinction, I suppose. Wellington had a boot named after him. Thomas Crapper didn't come off so well, I suppose, with self-flushing lavatories, but uh, Plumber Terrier sounds good. I'd like to have them named after me, sort of just like Jack Russell had them named after him. <laughs> Amazing prices are obtainable for terriers today, you know, for working terriers. Um, 350 pounds is not uncommon. You see that in papers like Exchange and Mart, to dogs advertised for that price, just working terriers. So this is the champion rat killer. It's the best I've ever had. I've, I've had better hunting dogs all around, but this is certainly the best rat-killing dog I've ever seen. Um, Called Omega. Omega, the last. She's so inbred to vampire, she's vampire mated to his own daughter, mated to his own daughter, mated to his own daughter. So the name Omega means the last, because I can't breed her any closer. I've probably killed more rats than any person in history. And, of course, it's like a bottomless pit, hunting rats. The faster you kill them, the faster they breed. If there is an environment in which they can live, and a suitable environment, chop the numbers about, and the social structure reorganizes itself very quickly, and they're back to breeding. Now, I know that rats can be dangerous, but just how dangerous are they to man? Very. One automatically associates the plague with a rat. Um, Man has pushed the rat into a corner. He can only live in the most loathsome places now. Originally, he was probably quite a clean creature who lived in desert-like wastes. He came from Mongolia originally, they believe. But now man has pushed him, so he lives in filth, in putrescence, in the most unpleasant places. And of course, the most unpleasant places have the most unpleasant bacteria, and the rat will carry those, just like a fly. This is a doe that's maybe eight months old. She'd be running the end of her span. She's not particularly big. It's, it's now very ferocious, as you can see. She's fairly scabrous as well. She's developed scabies of the tail. Here, you see? Rats are great carriers of scabies, both Cercoptes communis and Cercoptes scabii. You know, they're quite unpleasant creatures, generally. When people caught these for a living, and at one time, uh, good quality rats would fetch about two and six a dozen. That's um, 12 and a half pence. But sewer-bred rats, which were supposedly, uh, you know, had canker, which is a type of staphylococcus that rats had, um, carried, would fetch only a few shillings a hundred. But people caught them for a living, just as I'm doing now. But the beauty is the one that is carried by 55% of all healthy rats, which is leptospiral jaundice, or Veal's disease. But it doesn't have to bite to kill. It can urinate, and you can put your hand where that rat is urinated, or you can eat food that is contaminated by rat urine, you'll die. And... Well, surely medical science can prevent it if, if it's known. <laughs> no? It's not doing so good at the moment, let's put it this way. There are people who recover from Veal's disease, but there are a lot that die. How many of you know that have died from it? I've had three friends die. tell you the truth, that if I find a place is infested with rats, I have to go and look at it. I have to go and hunt them. Brian Plummer's expertise as a liquidator is well known. His services are offered willingly and completely free of charge to anyone with a rat problem. Mr. Bra Bradley. That's it. How do you Mr. Know Mr. Bradley? Plummer, yeah. Right. Um, um, what, have, what have you got, exactly? Well, I think the main problem what we've had is with pigs, we've had a lot of aborting in them that's yeah. been a problem. We don't know whether it's disease caused with rats or whether it's with people coming at night, startling them. Where have you actually seen them, you know, feeding? Usually after they've fed them, they come out and sit in troughs with pigs. Get yourself ready. Good girl! 
wisest of things. Hunting, you'll have to accept this, uh, hunting is cruel. There's no other way you can put it. I don't go out to, de to be deliberately cruel when I hunt. Um, although I'm afraid that many times some of the actions I've perpetrated on animals are cruel, there's no other word. But assuming the League of Cruel Sports uh, objects to my hunting rats, the alternative is to use a poison. Now, some of the poisons are ghastly. Ah, got it! Now, that's going to be the makings of your pap with a little bit of luck. They are just the most incredible creatures in the world. They're a worthy successor to man if man falls into decline. When the atomic war has reduced us all to <laughs> uranium skeletons, when all the din's finished, creeping out of the rubble will be the rat. He'll make it. Brian Plummer possesses a furious energy. Just 10 years ago, he began to write. Now he's probably Britain's most successful author about the down-market, cloth-cap kind of field sports. 23 books, including two novels, with combined sales soaring over half a million. And his deep knowledge of Oriental and ancient languages led him to a pressing interest in medieval magic and what he calls natural sorcery. Curiously, Browning hit nearly the right point with the Pied Piper story. The rat, the toad, the newt, the viper, and people call me the Pied Piper. Um, and rat exterminators who could lure rats from places were a dime a dozen, well, not a dime a dozen, but pretty plentiful, nevertheless. You see, magic depends on the credibility of people, but also in the person who is practicing the magic, believing it in himself. And perhaps science has cleared away a lot of misunderstandings regarding magic, sorcery, whatever you will, but has also given man a frontal lobotomy into looking at himself, you know. Because primitive man had something, there's no doubt at all. And he had some power. He was symbiotic with nature. Man isn't today. Man's out of kilter with nature. He's soon going to be the only mammal left on the planet, apart from the rat. I hunted during the time I was in college. I would spend my time around river banks poking rats out. I think I became ostracized by the students, and which prepared me for a life of ostracism by teaching profession. It didn't make a great deal of difference. The teaching profession is very, very unwilling to tolerate the rustic eccentric, the is bizarre. That you, is that oh. what you are? I have a degree of rusticity and a degree of eccentricity. Yes, probably a rustic eccentric. I think the teaching profession will tolerate the bizarre, but not the rustic. Brian Plummer, now nearly 50 and divorced, has taught for many years at one of the toughest schools in the Midlands. I think I've had a very, very bad deal in teaching because I've been quite good at teaching. And I've fallen foul of headmasters because I'm different. Uh, I have been treated damnably unfairly sometimes. And I was on a very bad depression and I threw a coin on the edge of the M6 and came down north. His quest ended 632 miles further north, here at Hill Head, East May, Caithness, a few miles from John O'Groats. And a major heart attack didn't quench his determination to live alone in such a strenuous environment. Aren't you taking rather a risk uh, living the hard life that you do it? Physically hard. I teach in one of the roughest schools in the Midlands. I work in one of the roughest ghettos in the Midlands. Damn. I get less results than probably any teacher in the business. I see more misery, more hardship. Isn't that far more stressful than keeping a team of dogs in Caithness? Have you ever counted how many dogs you own? Oh, I don't know, an awful lot of terriers. Quite a few lurchers, a um, lot of white German shepherds, and these bearded collies. Bearded collies? I never heard of those. Uh, well, they're different from borders in temperament, and they're different in the way that they react. There's a story that uh, 
when trade with Poland opened up, the Scottish sheep, which were prized throughout Europe, were fetched over. Come on, you can come up as well. And uh, <coughs> they were trying to ship some black-faced sheep on board a ship. And the rocking of the boat panicked the sheep. And none of the Scottish shepherds supposedly had dogs which were good enough to drive them up the gangplank. Whereupon these two Polish merchants produced a pair of a dog and a bitch, a different type of collie with a broad head, which set about the black face with a vengeance and drove them up the gangplank. And they were traded for two horned rams. And this is supposed to be the origin of the bearded collie. Um, these are working beardies. They're quite distinct from the stuff you see in crufts. These are bred only for sheep herding and, to a certain extent, cattle herding. They're a little rougher on sheep than some of the borders are. And um, they're not as popular. Of course, the program One Man and His Dog is producing a distinct strain of collie. It's producing a strain of collie that performs well on a Sunday afternoon with five sheep in a field. What do you need them for? I'm going to keep sheep, some, not many, but I shall start these on training sheep. Uh, well, break them to sheep. Uh, I'll start them on ducks to begin with, because ducks herd naturally. And when they've learned restraint not to chase ducks and just to herd them in together, they will be started on sheep. Now, you have all those terriers down in the Midlands. Yes. You have all the white Germans here and yes. these. When do you propose to bring them all together? When I come to Scotland to live, which I hope will be soon. Now, you seem to have so many passions in life. Now, what are you? Are you a rat hunter, a dog breeder, a teacher, a writer? Anything but a teacher now these days, I'm afraid. Um, I'm becoming less efficient as a teacher as I become more and more progressively ill. Uh, I have many passions. I think a man who has just one passion is either a chronic bore or a man who's only living half a life. Brian Plummer's principal passion now revolves around his German shepherds. They are no longer called Alsatians. They're called German shepherds. Uh, there's a reason. What's that? Uh, in the First World War, uh, anything that smacked of Germany bit the dust. Uh. Uh, people had their dachshunds killed. So a dog which was bred in Germany and had nothing to do with Alsace suddenly took on Alsatian ancestry. They were called Alsatians. Now I think we've reverted to a bit more sanity. Uh, they're the most adaptable dogs, but I intend to breed them for guide dogs for the blind, which I think this particular strain, which comes in from Germany, is superior to the Labrador, but I think they are. They're far more biddable, they're far more tractable, they're far more adaptable, and I think they're far more attractive. They have almost, this sounds anthropomorphic, but it, it's not meant to be. They have almost human intelligence. Considering some of the children I've taught, I would think, Perhaps a bit more, but that's being cynical. Um, there's nothing you can do with them. Uh, curious thing, Barry. Uh, what I would really like to do with them, I don't think anyone else has done in Britain, is I'd like to run them in harness as huskies. And when the deep snow came to the highlands, Brian Plummer launched this apparently bizarre scheme. A somewhat sceptical friend who owns a highly trained team of huskies came to show him, and more importantly, his dogs, how to set about it. The advantage I, these have over Siberian huskies is that well, they're totally tractable. Whereas a Siberian husky is totally intractable. You let it loose off the leash and it's gone. And I mean gone. You shoot it to get it back or you can trap it somewhere. Uh, you. If yeah. someone can train dogs to God, work God. with blind people, I'm sure I can train God. these to work with a sled. I would like to journey from Durness to Perth in midwinter next year. 
Looks decidedly unhappy. <laughs> Normally with there Siberians, you what you do is you pop them in at an earlier stage um, by running the dogs, as I've done. Well, these don't even know what the harness is yet, so... Come on, boy. Come on. Come here. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Are you ready? Hi, hi. Go on! Okay. Let me just try running along with them to give them a little bit of encouragement. Go on, then, no. Come on. Come on, then. Just... Come on. Go on, then. Brian, you'll have to push it. They won't... Hey! Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi. Hi. When you're ready. Go on, then. John, why is she pulling back that way? They will pull, and they will work. Not as well as a Siberian husky, nor as well as a Samoyed, which were bred for the job. Hey! But they will do the job well enough for me. And they will do the job well enough for me to cross Sutherland and Perthshire. The only fly in the ointment is whether I am capable of crossing Sutherland and Persia. That's it. <laughs> Good in that, Steve. <laughs> right. Good. Oi, now you've had yours. Good. All good. All good. Good. Things seem to be going quite well. I'm exhausted. I'm aware of the fact I've had a coronary. Yeah, so you were uh, pushing it just a little bit too much. No, I can take this, I think. Um... How about the dog's performance? Uh, are you satisfied? The older ones are trained for stunt work. Those are these two? Yes. These will do anything from attack to herd. They've no pull in me at all. They don't like going away from me. The young ones, they are learning fairly quickly. Um, how quickly, I don't know. But I think with the young team that I shall bring up, I shall drop these oldsters out. And I will have a team in about eight months that will take Scotland. Not at speed. No, they're not Siberian Huskies, these are German Shepherds. But they'll make it from Dunes to Perth. If I do. who, when he was dying at the age of 70, said, I am 140 years old. I have jammed two minutes into every one. I would like to be like John Wilkes. Um, I think I have a chance of reaching the age of 70 if I get out of the Midlands and come and live up here. I don't conform to the ways of other people. I don't want to. And here, the eccentric is tolerated. He may be viewed from afar. Up here, people tolerate eccentricities and don't regard the eccentric as someone to hurt. 
It is a land in which I think I have become reasonably compatible with it. And I've never been compatible with any country before.